it it was a headache. There are days that I'll do do do. I'll I'll have a headache. I'll just sleep off. Uh, but the key was not to give up because when I wake up, I'll start know. again. Like now, you don't have to load too much cast too much. You use low poly objects because by the time you start doing and rendering that time, I render. I think I render like a six forty by something. I don't do any seven twenty rendering. Six hundred yeah, <laughs> rendering. And some of some amazingly, it is. Wow. Crazy. Hello and welcome back to Simple or Difficult. In today's edition, we are going to be talking about something quite different from what we normally do. Okay, in today's video, I am going to be interviewing an experienced architect and 3D artist. Okay, this person has up to 10 years of experience under his belt. So today, hopefully, he'll be answering important questions that we have about what it takes to produce a nice 3D renders. Okay, you know, a lot of us, me included, we are actually trying to make it in the world of architecture and one of the places that you can actually make money, some money, good money in this, our field of architecture is in the area of visualization. So today he'll be answering important questions like his total workflow, what he likes to render with, you know, what it was for him when he started off as a 3D artist. Okay, and he's also going to tell us, you know, Things that you should focus on, things that when you get them right, you might, I mean, you just might be on your way to becoming a very nice 3D artist that does wonderful job, just like he does. Okay, so without any further ado, without wasting much of our time, let's quickly jump into this interview. <laughs> Tell us about 3DS man. Yeah, 3DS man. How long how long did it take you to become good at it? It took me at least um um three years. Three years of intense it work. Intense work, yeah, because oh, wow. uh, it was self-taught, you understand? Okay. It was self-taught at first. At that time YouTube wasn't what it was what it is it now. It wasn't what it is. I had to learn from um um learnvira.com. The videos were not so like it's not easy to comprehend now because it's not in your own the kind of English there and the kind of it's not well developed. It's not well like you, you understanding it is a problem. And that time I think all those softwares are even more complicated than they are. Now. It is complicated then because there are some kind of steps too. You know, if I'm doing a tutorial video, there's a possibility that I might just skip some step thinking mm. that okay, you you are supposed to know this thing, yes. especially when you are a beginner. Yes. And if you don't get all those videos hang, hands on, like mm -hmm. it's a serious problem. Yeah. Because there are steps, key steps that you miss. Yeah. And you'll now be surprised, how did this guy go from year to year? Yeah. And you don't even know. You understand? Yeah. So it, it was a headache. There are days that I'll do, do, do. I'll, I'll have a headache. I'll just sleep off. Uh, but the key was not to give up. Because when I wake up, I'll yeah. start again. But, but then, is it only the <sighs> tutorials that is being difficult? Did you have like nice system that can be able? Because that was part. That is part of the reason, a problem that people are having. Yeah. They will not find sources and contents online that they can easily access. Even when they access it, they won't be able to understand it. And then there is a the problem of system. Yes. Yeah. Well, did, did you have very nice? No, systems I never, I never had a nice system. I think I started with a pencil. Ah, I started with a pencil. <laughs> but like when as I progressed, that was when I now even understand that it is important that your system specs is important to uh, to the kind of work you do. But before yeah, we even yeah. talk but, about that one, yes. What was the experience like using a pencil? Can you use a pencil? I would like to remember. You don't get to do much, so you have to maximize and like make compress whatever you are doing especially in your scene like now you don't have to load too much cast too much you use low poly objects 
<laughs> because by the time you start doing and rendering that time, I render, I think I render like a 640 by something. I don't do any 720 rendering. <laughs> 600. Yeah, 600 rendering. And somehow, some amazingly, it is. Wow. Uh, what, as I progress, that was when I yeah. realized that you can even do more. Yeah. You understand? You can make your scene better and the rest. But the truth is, when you now get a good system spec, that's when you can now do better scenes. You can yeah. now do bigger scenes. You are not worried about loading components yeah. into your scene because you use very high quality. Yeah, you use high quality models and rest because your system at that as of now can handle it better. Mm -hmm. But as of that time, yeah. you use very, very low poly objects. You understand? So yeah. that um, if not, before you just click render, your system has crashed. All right. So so right now. What advice would you give somebody that is trying to learn this thing? Like the person from zero experience, the person knows nothing about rendering. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the person has been using Lumion or Inkscape or whatever, but not 3ds Max. Would you advise the person to use V-Ray or, you know, there's this other software that is taking over the market now, Corona. Okay. Would you advise the person to use V-Ray or Corona or what type of system spec? But first of all, let's talk about what advice you are giving to the people that are about to start you know venturing into 3ds max yeah, the first thing is zeal you understand you must want to do it you must like to do it because when you start especially when it is self-taught it is frustrating the thing that keeps you pushing is zeal if you have the zeal and the flair for creating good images good architectural images you must have the zeal first mm -hmm. then in terms of choosing a renderer i would suggest you choose corona because Corona is not as tasking on your um, system GPU. It's not really, really dependent on your system GPU as Vray. Vray is more dependent on your system GPU. And if you are just um, a learner or a beginner that you don't have such high system spec, then it's better you go for Corona. All you just need to do is have a system with good RAM and with good RAM and it will be better for you. It will work better for you because Corona is kind of designed to work more with your RAM than your GPU. Okay. The, the work your GPU does in Corona is just maybe adding lens flares and some other little, little things. But a bulk of the rendering is done with your system CPU. So once you have a good system with a good CPU and a good processor, it is fine. Okay. So, do, you, can, do you have like, you know, a specification of system for people to get, you know, in preparation of learning? Okay, because, you know, this thing, it, it gets better as the day goes by. The type of machines we have now, yes. probably when you learn, nobody has access to that type of machine, you know, back then. But now we have machines. We have fast, thank God for fast systems. I, I love the light machines. Yeah. <laughs> We have fast this now. is not a commercial today <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but, but, but now, if you are going to recommend the lowest, the benchmark of yes. what people should go for, yes. you know, for easy and fluidy, you know, intro to yes. rendering in 3ds Max, what would that be? Well, I would say the system spec I will go for if I'm a beginner. I would rather get a system with at least 16 gig RAM. The 32 gig RAM is better, or more of the RAM if you're using Corona. So 16 or 32 gig RAM will do it. Yes, you need to have a graphic card, but at least 4 gig is okay. Oh. Anything with 4 gig of RAM of NVIDIA GPU or Radeon, um, Radeon graphic card is good, or NVIDIA graphic card. Um, okay. Anything from um, 1080 graphics is fine. 1050, 1060, 1050, 1050, 1050 Ti. Yeah, Ti graphics. 1050 Ti graphics. NVIDIA 1050 Ti. Okay. 4 gig. Yes. RAM. 1060 too. Yes, a 1060 uh, and up on. You know, is good. 3 gig, 6 gig. Yeah, 3 yeah. gig, 6 gig. Well, but the minimum go. is 4 gig. All right. Yes, yeah, you All are right. good. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. This is, um, it has been a very helpful session and, um, we appreciate you for your input. I appreciate you too. Right. Sir. Okay. No. So now I'm going. I'm just going to you know show them some of your works from the beginning stage <laughs> and what it is now. So uh, one more thing. One more thing before we go. Yes. So what what are your experiences right now? How is it different as on back in the day when you started? Okay. Is it easier for you? Does it get easier with the more work you do, or does it get tougher? Because I know that. You know, challenges come. Sometimes you do face some challenges that you have not faced before. You do get some jobs that you have not done something like that before. 
Tell us about that. Does it get easier or what? Yeah, it gets easier in terms of the interface and using the software as you go on. But when challenges come, that is with every job comes a different challenge. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's not easy because you get to meet a different challenge. And also, as you go higher, you want to do more. You want to do better. You're as good as your last job. So when you get a new job, you want to do better than what you did before. Okay. So as you go higher you get to do better things than what you've done before. Right. And that is where the challenge is comes in. But if it, in terms of using the software, it gets easier because you already understand the interface. And with years of using it, it's better for you. All right. Yes. That is actually, that is actually very insightful. I, we appreciate you, Thank you so for that information. All right now, so what are your most important keys? So producing a good render. Is it the camera? Is it the lighting? Is it the model? Is it the system? Like what should be in, in the hierarchy, you know, in scale of um, preference, what you think is key to a happy render? Okay. Yeah, if, you put it, if you put it like that, well, I'll say the most important thing is your lighting. Okay. When you're doing anything, the first most important thing for me is the lighting. <laughs> The lighting, when you have a very good light, whatever you place in that light, whatever model you place in that light, eh, it comes out looking nice and realistic. Okay. The reason why we see things the way we see in nature is because of the kind of light we get from the sun and the atmosphere and how it uh, diffuses through the atmosphere. That's what makes us see things in reality. Yeah. You understand? So when you have a good light, then two, you must, it will now be decompositing. You must compo compose your scene very well. Mm -hmm. You must, there are do's and don'ts. There's a way things appear in realism that you have to follow, follow for you to get a good image or a realistic looking image. Mm -hmm. Then also your camera, the angle, obey the laws of perspective. Don't be a giant. You can't be looking at the car and you are like almost um, 10, 21 feet higher than the car or uh, 1,000 1, meters away from the car or 3,000 meters away from the car. Yeah. That's your eye level. Yeah. Uh, that's no good. So for me to be lighting, compositing, camera, then render. All right. Okay, let me just first to wrap up now. This argument has been, I know a lot of people have been wondering, Vire and Corona, yes. which one is better? <laughs> we... uh, it's still the um, same um, people that produce both softwares, but if I must choose over one over the other, I will choose Corona. Why? For a faster output. Okay. For a faster output, you use Corona to get a faster and a less frustrating output. Because wow. the settings in Vire, for <laughs> Elena, Elena cannot really comprehend the settings in Vire because the settings in Corona are already like, um, let's say, bespoke settings. You don't really do anything. Okay. Once you get to the render setting, you just set your um your your image your your image aspect your aspect ratio for your image and you hit render after you've done your other lighting and the rest compositing but mm -hmm. in vire you go to set a lot of things you go to set the camera you go to set noise level you go to set the radiance map you go to and for some beginners when you start talking all this it just feels like gibberish to them yeah because like they won't really understand it so for a better and an easier process is better you use Corona. Corona is way better. Also, in terms of how tasking it is on your system, you don't need a high-end spec system to use Corona, but you need a very high-end spec system to use Vire. Okay. And so now we're looking at the cost because uh, you can't tell a beginner to come and be buying laptops that are close to a millionaire just to start learning a software. Yeah. But if he has lesser money with at least 300,000, he can get a good system and mm -hmm. start off with Corona. Yeah. And as he progresses and makes money in the field too, okay. can now buy something that is high end. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming to the studio today. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And please introduce yourself. I realize we didn't do that at the beginning. <laughs> so, yes. My name is um, Architect Jeremiah. Okay. Uh, I am a 3D artist, an architect and a 3D artist. Okay. And he, let me just add that he went to University of Nigeria in the campus where he got both the bachelor's degree and the master's degree. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate I'm going to attach the links to his 
Instagram channels, all, all his links. I'm going to get it from him and I'm going to put it in the description. Do well to follow him, do well to give him jobs. He's very good at what he does. When you go to those links, you're going to see what he's capable of. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> All right, there you have it. There you will see the important things that you should focus on while you know embarking on your journey as a 3D artist. Okay? Yeah, you have seen that you should focus on your light when you shine a good when you set your light well, you know, in his word, he said when you depending on how you position your light, anything can look beautiful. Then he talked about, you know, um, cameras and all that. So, and you see, he started off with <laughs> <laughs> with a very wax system. I wonder what your excuse is. So, whatever you have, my own takeaway from this interview is, whatever you have, whatever machine you have, you can start something with it. And with time, as you do jobs, as you improve, you can think of getting, you know, a higher machine, you know, for your visualization. All right, so thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate you. I hope this video has helped you. I hope this edition of Simple or Difficult podcast has helped you in a way. If it has, please give us a like. If you are new to this channel, welcome. If this is the first video you're watching on this channel, please consider subscribing. Not only that, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future content. All right? I will see you in my next video.